Hi there, I'm Ezekiel Dasho, and today I'm going to draw this young lion. Uh, it's going to be very similar to the kitten and the snow leopard and um, that I've drawn if, if you've been watching along. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do is start marking out my boundaries a little bit and I see this top this ear on the top is uh, sort of the high point in the picture. The, physically, it's the high point of the picture. Um, and then from there, I start blocking in this ear. And I'm not going to worry too much about any of it right now besides the general outline and making sure that these points are angled correctly. So I'll just draw a light curve if you need to. And all that stuff will just give depth to the, like these light lines that we use to construct the frame will just give uh, depth to the shading later. And then just traveling along, you know, if you need to, you could, um, for the, the, the distances here, you could look at it as a sort of a triangle in the empty space and just make the same shape here. Um, or you could just keep, keep moving along they're about these these line segments here are about equal um, this ear here and the shape of these ears is important uh, for the just the realism of the look so see this area here where it's a little darker and you can kind of start to key into some of those details too um, so then this ear trails off into the mane as well as this one or the, uh, the fur and there's this this sort of shadow from where the tufts of fur are puffier near the ears. And we've got this line in the middle, just starting to, this sort of the furrowed brow almost of the lion. Um, and so we're getting into the stage where we want to block the eyes. Or, um, draw the eyes in and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to show I just want to demonstrate this drawing this curve I might not do this if I wasn't drawing this for somebody else but this is an easy way to tell where the eye begins um, and vertically it comes up to about the center of the ear here so this is a good way to begin your point here and, and then basically from there you almost can just draw a circle with keeping it a little bit you know lighter on the top because that's going to get drawn over and we want this side of the eye to stop roughly with if you'd go vertical line straight up with that corner of the ear here so you know I'm not going to draw the line there but you, you can see in your mind and you can you know if it helps you can certainly lightly sketch that in on your work so then there's sort of this uh, light teardrop shape thing coming out of the line coming down um, 
we've got the eyebrow here. So then going across, you know, similar on this side, um, say we want to start with the inner point and it, it's not quite straight down from that ear. Like if you look on the photograph, it's, if you come straight down from the top of his head, it's almost, you know, halfway or a third of the two thirds of the way up this area here. And in terms of how high and low it is, it's just a, a little bit lower than, than here. There's almost this curve here that leads to it. And, it, you know, it's almost like if you, if you did, wanted to do a straight line there, it would be just at a little bit of an angle. But uh, that'll help you get the, the coordinates for where you are going to want to put the eye to stay in keeping with the, the photograph. And on the right side, or on, it would be his left eye, our right, this, the far right side of the picture, um, we want that, that eye, the tip, to end a little bit in from his tip of his ear. So it's just this matter of using the vertical and horizontal elements of your picture to locate every sort of coordinate in relationship to the other. There's almost a mathematical element to it too, because it, it does have a lot to do with like being able to, you know, like a geometric element there, you know, making your own coordinates and, uh, seeing the angles and in, um, there's a lot so it's a, sort of like a mental geometry that goes on and an actual you know an actual kind of geometry that goes on so he's got these like really bright sort of shines in his eye I'm going to just draw um, around those a little bit so that I don't cover over them while I'm shading and then each one's sort of the shape of a I don't know like a wave kind of and then above that there's a shadow and in the shadow you can see his eyelashes a little bit so you know later on in the details you just keep that in mind and depending on the size and um, sort of the resolution of the image that you want just keep that in mind as you're working on the eyes um, for now we'll just uh, get them blocked in here and move along and uh, what if I leave them flat white I might as well just work on them here um, we haven't we've only I've only done one eye so far on my YouTube channel um, if you're completely new to drawing eyes um, I recommend going ahead and watching that. It's pretty quick and it just is a very basic demo on how to, the basic principles. This is gonna be very similar and it's sort of old hat for people who have done life drawing before because you know everybody starts with eyes. That's one of like the first thing people need to learn how to draw. And um, the basic principle is you know getting your, your pupil in there and, that, and then designating that as your darkest space basically getting the shape in around it and you know the iris on an, a lion is definitely different than the iris on a human and the pupils are much rounder than I would like if you look at a house cat's pupils are very different um, very similar though just similar to drawing a glass of water or a spoon or anything else you just draw kind of what you see and you know keep in mind the position of the once you've got the form and keep in mind the position of the shadows and to get it to have a reflection you know you just sort of draw what is being reflected in the eye itself so like in the case of this eye here that would be a little bit of eyelash or fur or something right there just to hint at the shape and up here same thing 
there is quite a bit darker of a shadow because the brow is kind of thick. So we'll keep moving along because otherwise these are going to get way too dark and the rest of the picture is not going to uh, sort of match in darkness. Um, okay, so we got the eyes in there and now I'm just going to quick spent a long time on those so I'll just kind of start moving along faster and uh, down here a little bit with this arc almost from this pupil it makes this long arc here and then that would get us to this point here I don't want to make the face too long He's not a sad lion. He's a just looking at the camera. So the nose, um, it, we see that at the top of the corner of the nose starts a little bit higher than this point here, and it is under the eye, under the pupil rather, and that can kind of get you that starting point and then once you've got that you can start to build the rest of it and the, on this side of the face the nose corner vertically comes about here so you you just mark that in a little bit you know that's your stopping point it's where you need to get to and then go ahead and you know, someone will just start blocking this in. I can make a correction down here, which I'm going to need to do because it's a little bit off. Well, it's a lot off. Um, that's, that's okay. That can get corrected. But I'm liking where my nose is positioned here. Just go ahead and shade that in a little bit. I'm going to drop this line down here, and that is a bit, probably a better way to get this spot here on his upper lip. I don't draw a lot of big cats, so I'm no big cat expert. I just wanted to use this um, continuation of my series on animals. That's why, because I don't draw a lot of big cats, it's good to practice things you're not completely familiar with because it helps you learn new things but um, I mean there are a lot of good things about practicing and it's oh, they're really fun to shade because of the way the fur works and stuff like that so um, keep this moving along here and so it's looking pretty rough now but that's that's okay it's I think I think it'll look good when we're done. And um, so now I'm just going to start blocking in some of this side fur. And, you know, you could, there are a couple ways to go about this. You could almost just draw in the shape of it and then worry about some of the details later. Um, up here, you see that the chest fur starts to come out. And I want to keep this really light under the chin here because that is pretty bright. And by contrast, start drawing in the coat below. And this process here for drawing the coat, very similar to, you know, we've talked about a little bit of, I think, coats and hair, animal coats. Um, it, you know, you don't worry about drawing every single hair unless you're going for, you know, extreme hyper-realism or something like that, uh, which we're not, which I'm not doing in this video. This is more sketching and life drawing style. I want it to look a little bit like a drawing, not, you know, I want to retain the realism aspect, but I don't, you know, I want this to be the kind of thing where if you were at the zoo, 
you could sketch this guy before he moved. And my picture is going to take a little bit longer than you would need to be to, to do this out in the field. Uh, but, the, you know, it's so, so that you can kind of develop these. And so I'm working on myself developing these skills that make it so you can just do life drawing from life out in the field on the fly, keep it moving fast and still get the the realism and the contrast and the because a lot of times what hyper realism is all about is it's all these same principles it's just that you have to apply a lot more time and you keep you keep adding you know work to develop it and um and granted i mean there's there's added complexity as well the fundamentals of the way of seeing realist, you know, realistically and translating, being able to self-analyze and stuff like that are the same. It's like when I noticed that I made a mistake down here, you know, I mean, at the, at the core of it, there are two things you can do. You can fail to acknowledge it or you can acknowledge it. And once you acknowledge it, then you've got to decide, you know, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to correct it? Or are you going to just move on and hope that everything will be okay? And um, I found that it's better to acknowledge and correct based on self-analysis than just to continue and persist in error. And uh, even if that individual drawing might not turn out the exact way that you wanted the what you learn in the process makes your next drawing all the better and sometimes like a lot of times because we're using such a light touch you can correct what you've done without having to erase or whatever and uh, so drawing from nature likes to be very forgiving so I it's another one of the reasons that I wanted to do this series on animals because for people who are just maybe coming to drawing as, an, as a skill, um, you know, it can be sort of daunting. Um, but drawing from nature oftentimes can give you results that you can be proud, very proud of and show to your friends and family and stuff. And also, you know, which it helps encourage you to continue. Um, also, the process of drawing from nature can be, besides fun, it can be sort of uh, flexible and so here we'll see we see have this dark spot here we can kind of draw that in and uh, you know now we're getting if you've watched any of my other videos we're going to start this process of like identifying the dark areas and sort of blocking those in to establish the the dark points in the picture and um, a lot of, a great way to do that is with cross hatching. And and depending on the kind of pencil and paper you're using, you're going to get results that are, that vary. And uh, just aesthetics that vary. Um, So we see here in the ears, there's these areas that are, excuse me, there are these areas that are quite dark. And this is a place where, you know, you could get some interesting shapes in here like this. And what I'm doing is like just imagining these white hairs here. And uh, shading around them basically um, that would be one one great way to 
tackle those spots um, or those area the really bright hairs against the dark background rather than going in and erasing you can just go around and uh, it can be very time consuming the more the more like realistic you want to make it so for now I'm just going to kind of suggest that's what's going on and keep keep rolling and here I'm just changing up the brush stroke because we've got these like tufts of hair sort of pointed at the camera so it's just a little bit altering the way of shading here kind of give it some uh, variance variety and then I've been shading for a while so part of my pencil I don't know if you can pick this up on camera is extremely sharp and I like doing that because it, it leaves it so I have a sharp edge that I can work with here for stuff like this and it also leaves me with this sh uh, very soft edge and it's extremely soft I mean this thing you can it's smooth and soft and you can use it for shading broad strokes and broad areas without without almost any delineation and tonal value so highly recommend using your pencil like that and that way you don't have like to have two pencils one of different sharpness and one of dullness and I mean that's a great way to do it too if that's what's comfortable I'm definitely not talking smack about that because I do that sometimes too it's uh, but like if say you're you know like out in the field or whatever you've got like one or two pencils maybe but they might be you know different hardnesses or something this uh, this can be a great way to you know not have to go back to the pencil sharpener all the time and, and basically if you wanted to you could rotate it around as you shade and, and create a point in the middle rather than a point on the side and kind of as you go sort of whittle it down into a sharper and sharper point I mean to the point where you can get get it you know sharper than a needle so now let's just keep going on this shading and I'm kind of sticking with the basic patterns here Um, just these big cats are great because they really lend themselves well to to shading the coats aren't too long and they're not too short and there's all kinds of different places to practice different styles of of shading so like on this area there are these sort of spots that are a little darker um, so I, what I've done is I've gone, I'm going to go over them once, you know, this way to give the directional sense of the fur and then I'm going to go over them with a little bit of a crosshatch to give them the, the darkness. Then I'm also, what I'm going to look at for here is the different planes on the face. And you see how like the fur is moving a little bit differently in different planes of the lion's face like this one here they all the strands of fur are moving like that but on this one here they're all moving kind of like that and paying close attention to that is gonna make it um, first of all it gives you guidelines for like what direction to shade so that's really nice like free guidelines um, but also it'll help you make it look uh, it'll look more real to the viewer 
And oh, another uh, finally a great another great point about noticing that is that'll help you. Like especially this is for new people, but you know especially when we go into drawing human faces. Um, noticing the planes on a human face isn't as necessarily as easy depending on the lighting. Um, you, you know, unless you really know your anatomy. Um, and sometimes you can get in there and look at the grains of, in the pores, and you can see like all oh, the pores are moving this way on that one and this way on that one. So that, but um, you know, it, it's they're easy to notice once you start looking for them. But if you're not, you know, paying attention to the planes as you draw stuff is going to start to look all out of whack. And, uh, you know, it's, it depends on the look you're going for, but uh, as you get into life drawing, like when you do a nose or something, I mean, if the planes on the nose don't look right, it's just going to look like it's misshapen or in the wrong direction or like the light's not hitting it the way natural light would, which... Because it's a human face, you know, the viewer recognizes instantly. And so you can see these with these lions, these lion, these uh, areas where. The planes are, you know, there are areas where it's really, they're really important. And there are areas where it's more important to just get the shading on there and then worry about the sort of the, the, the way that the plane of the f object is in relation to the light source. I'll worry about that a little later. Um, I mean, for instance, with this, this inside this ear, I mean, it, it's just super black. So it's not like, you know, it's not like you need to worry too much about the plane planner, I guess is the word aspect of it too much. Um, you know, we just know the viewer, uh, we just know that that's, it's dark, obviously, and it's an ear and that makes sense our eye just says okay that makes sense um, I'm gonna you know rove on to the next part of this picture and maybe look at the eyes a little more for instance we tend to want to get as viewers gravitate toward things that are shiny And um, you could develop these eyes as much as you want. I mean, there's really, it's really up to you how you want to go about that. I recommend just staying as true to life as you can and being as real as you can. Uh, you know, our our, in my opinion, or in my experience, our personalities get in there when we're being as real as we can better than they do when we're taking shortcuts or not thinking straight. definitely won't lose anything by you concentrating hard to make it real. And there's my speech about realness. I 
because there's definitely like these spots that are so dark then some spots that are shiny or dark spots that are you know what's the word I'm looking for dark but less shiny <laughs> not dull certainly because it's like the surface of an eye but it's not quite glassy like other parts of the like this spot here there's like this triangle of white almost I don't know if I can get that same over on this side there's this triangle of sort of whiteness um, and then I should probably bring my the tops of my eyes down a little bit they're a little they're a little high um, so yeah this is like the part where you can kind of get a sense for like how how much adjusting you can actually do too too shiny and the the pupils are black for the most part but they are catching a little bit of that shine too so maybe they're not uniformly black throughout maybe they're like mostly black on the top on the bottom or on the top and then really dark black on the bottom all right we're going to move on a little bit um easy to get lost in the eyes they're super fun to draw and you know, you don't want to overwork the paper, but you can definitely put a lot of time and energy into um, studying them and looking. You could like, if I was going to do this for a big piece, I might study different aspects of it before, like if I was going to paint it or something or draw it really big, I might, you know, study the eyes in particular and see exactly like how many eyelashes are being reflected in the, you know, each eye so that I can get the shine of the, the reflection and to look ac you know, exactly accurate to the picture. Um, so let's develop some of this chest hair here and see these areas here where it's, I almost wanna kinda use like this say diamondy kind of motion but it's like bows almost but they intersect a little bit and now I've got this chin area as you can see and it my chin is a little gray and the chin on this lion this lion's name is Mara if I remember from the photograph but the chin here is lighter. And so I've sort of, in a way, I've kind of painted myself into a corner if I don't want to like erase and stuff, which I don't. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this area here a little bit darker. And then I'm going to use that like darkness here to accentuate the lightness there. So pretty, pretty simple concept. Um, you know, I'm not really drawing, I'm not really darkening this in order to have it recede into the background or anything like that, or to pull it forward or anything. I'm just, you know, I've sort of, like I said, 
drawn myself into a little bit of a corner and I need to darken that up just to have the chin look lighter. Some of these whiskers here are pretty dark, so we could go ahead. As far as the white whiskers go, I would recommend um, treating them similarly to as we did to the uh, like the uh, ear hair up here, or up here rather where you've got this like really light hair and you rather than draw the white hairs in uh, just to draw around or shade around them. And so we were going to do that down here. So we've got this nice white line. I want to keep that in. But we would kind of say, okay, those places there are going to have, you know, white hairs running through. So let's not draw on those. <laughs> and then as, as we go, we could say, we could uh, just keep those places untouched. And it's sort of similar to same concept kind of as um, leaving like a white spot in the eye. It's just different. It's, a, you know, with, with the shape of a whisker rather than a, you know, rather than a reflective shine in an eye or something like that. It's can, it can be pretty time consuming. That's why I tend to just gloss over it on my YouTube videos because, you know, like it could be half an hour of just shading around those things just to make sure that they're not uh, that they're that they're looking like white and that they're not getting misshapen or infringed by the surrounding. shadows and stuff. So yeah, now we're getting into that place where it's kind of fun, just kind of finishing touches and you know, finding finding those areas where you see a little bit of a pattern or something, and just accentuating it a little bit, or getting uh, little uh, lines of darkness that you see. Because it, even though it is a line, I mean, it, it does have not spots per se, but there are some little spotty parts and, you know, some variations that will give the figure some life and some visual allure because they're just interest it's interesting to see those differences um, 
here. So almost got this round spherical shape of a muzzle area. But it's not completely white and it's not flat uh, and it is catching some of the light. So you can just kind of treat it like one big sphere almost or similar shape with roundness. And just go ahead and add the value in, but not, but don't, um, you know, worry too much about the fine details there, just to give it the shape of the the thing by getting the, uh, the values in the right places. And I don't want any of them to be flat white. The only parts that I want to be flat white are or like bright white are in the eyes and that's uh, even that's not necessarily needed in this picture because the reflections aren't super white hot they're not coming right from a f flash in the photography they're they're coming from the horizon And my nose, let's see if I can give my nose a little more TLC here. See, there's this like bridge shape in the, almost in the fur. Let's darken up these lips here. Definitely not dark enough. It's not a super sharp line there either, but it is pretty dark. The nose right here, there might be a little bit of a sharp line. Underneath the nose, there is uh, let's see this dark. I draw a lot of lion noses, so mine looks a little bit, to my view, looks a little bit cartoonish. Um, so I'm going to look at, you know, just focus in on the picture a little bit and see what I can do to make it more like, like that. And there are these places like where the creases are, where it's almost a sharp black line. Some more darkness would be good here. Some more darkness here. More darkness toward the top and over here. But the most on this side. It's starting to look better. some more
And so let's finish it up here. So here I'm just, you know, looking at the, the photo and seeing where the areas of fur kind of change direction and just going with it. darker here. And then I'll go back over. Got these areas that are pretty bright white. Just gonna put in a few more whiskers here. I kind of skipped a lot of the detail on the ear. Kind of see if I can get a little bit in fast. It's nice because the the lion has a lot of like near the edges of the fur. There's a lot of light. There's a lot of stuff going on with the light and the golden um, fur. This would be a fun thing to do in colored pencil or paint. Uh, just because of how many different kinds of like goldish tan there are in the the picture, and then near the edges of the fur, there's a lot of like short fur that's catching a little bit of light. It really becomes a thing about how much time you're gonna put into developing the. Uh, Developing the picture, as we've talked about already. And so, yeah, I'm almost done with this uh, bust of a lion, young lion. point where I just need to say I'm done already and <laughs> be done and not keep messing with it um, go on to the next one um, I plan to get the next video out for you guys real soon and thanks so much for watching and being part of the uh, you know the creative process with me and I hope this definitely hope this is useful and helpful to people. I, you know, encourage everybody to draw along at home. You're never too young or old to start drawing and everyone can do it. Um, just do a little practice and a little bit of, you know, study and, If you, uh, if you did enjoy the video, please go ahead and like and subscribe. And there will be more drawing videos soon. Uh, my channel is just all drawing videos. I don't do rants on you know, sports or anything like that. Um, so yeah, if you subscribe, it'll just be more drawing videos. And though keep building and building and uh, yeah so like and subscribe share with share with somebody who 
who draws um, comments and critiques and encouragement and praise and <laughs> discouragement and disdain are pretty much all equally appreciated for the most part. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I hope I hope you guys like this one and. This is uh, this is Ezekiel Dasho signing out.